Hi everyone. Um, I've been involved with photography since I was a little kid. And there are a lot of times in my life that people have asked me uh, what they could do to become better photographers. So I thought I'd put together a video uh, so that I don't have to go over my little talk uh, over and over again. I think that there are several basic principles that are important um, to really understand the fundamentals of photography. And one of them is proper exposure. Now, while some concepts translate from photography to video, there are some pretty important differences, which is why I'm going to end up making two videos, one for photography and one for video. A lot of people are really intimidated by photography, and I really like to keep things very simple. So my videos will focus on what I believe will help you improve your photography skills the fastest. Since I'm sure most, if not all of the people who are going to watch this video are going to shoot with digital cameras. I'm just going to focus on the digital aspect. If you are using a film camera, then just substitute the word sensor for film. So what is a proper exposure? The proper exposure simply means that for the scene that you're shooting, the proper amount of light is hitting the sensor. That's really it. It's not any more complicated than that. If too much light hits the sensor, the photo will be overexposed. Overexposed photos are too bright and they generally tend to lose detail in the brightest areas as they become pure white. If not enough light hits the sensor, then the photo is underexposed. As I'm sure you can imagine, underexposed photos are going to be too dark and a lot of times you'll lose all the details in the darkest areas as they're pure black. Believe it or not, there are only two basic elements in your camera that control how much light hits your sensor, shutter speed and aperture. Many people consider ISO as part of the exposure. However, as I'll explain later, changing your ISO doesn't actually change the amount of light that's hitting your sensor. To make sure you have a complete understanding, I will include ISO in the later part of this video. Since it's a little bit simpler, let's look at shutter speed first. By default, the shutter on your camera is closed. And shutter speed refers to the length of time that the shutter stays open when you hit the shutter release button. So for example, if you used a 1 one hundredth of a second shutter speed, then when you press the shutter release button, the shutter will open for a 1 one hundredth of a second and then close. If you use a shutter speed of a half a second, then the shutter will open for a half a second and then close. Now the shutter on your digital camera doesn't actually open and close like this. It actually opens and then closes like that, but the concept is still the same. Since a 50th of a second is twice as long as 100th of a second, 50th of a second shutter speed is going to let in twice as much light as 100th of a second. Remember that when you're looking at your camera and the shutter speed says 100, it's actually 1 over 100 or 1 100th of a second. A shutter speed of 1000 is actually 1 1000th of a second. Understanding the effect of shutter speed on exposure is very simple. Since a sensor is only exposed to light when the shutter is open, a longer shutter speed will let in more light. A shorter shutter speed will let in less light. So if you're looking at your photo and it's too dark, one of the ways that you can brighten it up is by using a longer shutter speed and therefore letting more light hit the sensor. On the opposite side, if your photo is too bright, one of the ways to make it a little bit darker is to use a faster shutter speed and therefore not let as much light hit the sensor. Aperture, or sometimes you'll hear people say f-stop, uh, refers to the opening in your lens that lets light travel through and hit your sensor. Before we get into anything that's more complicated than it needs to be, I'm just going to say, and it will be pretty intuitive, that a larger opening is going to let more light in than a smaller opening. If your photo is too dark, one of the ways that you can brighten it is by selecting a larger opening with your aperture settings and therefore letting more light hit the sensor. If your photo is too bright, one of the ways to darken it up is to use a smaller opening and therefore restrict the amount of light that's hitting your sensor. Now f-stops are the numbers that are used to describe the size of the opening in your lens. And this is really what confuses people the most. And the reason is 
that as the numbers get larger, the opening actually gets smaller. So for example, an f-stop of 2.8 is a much larger opening than an f-stop of 11, which is counterintuitive. Most people think that as the numbers get larger, so does the opening. And again, that's what causes the confusion. Without going into too many details, the reason for this is that the number that you're seeing is actually part of a ratio used to calculate the size of the opening. And although this isn't how the size of the opening is calculated, I want you to think of the aperture numbers that you're seeing as part of a fraction. So when you see two, I want you to think one over two. If you see eight, I want you to think of one over eight. And as long as you think of it that way, you'll always remember that one half is a larger opening than one quarter, for example. Another thing that contributes to the confusion is that people use terms like smaller aperture or larger aperture to refer to the size of the opening and not the actual f-stop number. So if someone tells you to use a larger aperture, they're actually telling you to use a larger opening, which is a smaller number. Now, aperture also has a direct effect on depth of field, but in this video, we're only going to discuss exposure. In digital photography and videography, ISO is a setting of the camera's sensor's sensitivity to light. Low ISOs, like 100 or 200, mean that the sensor is less sensitive to light. Higher ISOs, 1600, 3200, 6400, etc., mean that the sensor is more sensitive to light. Again, there's a direct relationship here. So if you go from 100 ISO to 200 ISO, you're making the sensor twice as sensitive, and therefore you'll need half the amount of light to get the same exposure. If you change the ISO from 100 to 400, you're now making the camera sensor four times as sensitive to light, and you'll only need a quarter of the amount of light to achieve the same exposure. One of the questions that I get all the time is, well, then why wouldn't I just use a higher ISO all the time since it means I don't need as much light? The answer is that as your camera sensor becomes more sensitive to light, your pictures will become more noisy or grainy. So as a good rule of thumb, you wanna use the lowest ISO that you can to achieve the exposure that you want. One of my favorite ways to illustrate proper exposure is to use a glass of water. Imagine that water represents light and that a full glass of water represents the right amount of light needed to achieve a proper exposure. In order to fill the glass with water, we'll need to turn the faucet on and then off, just like pressing the shutter release button opens and then closes the shutter. We can control two things, how long the faucet stays on, which is just like shutter speed, and how big the opening is, which is just like aperture. So to fill the glass with water, I can either turn the faucet on very low and then leave it on for a longer amount of time, or I can turn it on full blast, and then I don't have to leave it on for as long. Remember that turning the faucet on very low and only letting a little bit of water out at a time is the same as using a small aperture, which is a large number, and only letting in a little bit of light at a time. Using the example of a glass of water, you can see that there is an inverse relationship between aperture and shutter speed. Basically, the smaller the opening is, the longer I have to leave the faucet on for. And the larger the opening is, the less amount of time I need to fill my glass. I know I said earlier that ISO isn't really part of the exposure because it doesn't change the amount of light that's hitting the sensor. But in our example here of a glass of water, ISO would actually be the size of the glass. A lower ISO, like 100 or 200, means that the sensor is less sensitive to light, which means it needs more light. That would be represented by a larger glass. A higher ISO, meaning the sensor is more sensitive to light, would be represented by a smaller glass. Finally, to illustrate over and under exposure, a glass that is only half full would be underexposed. I didn't get enough water in there to fill the glass. A glass that is overflowing is overexposed. I put too much water in there or let in too much light. Now there are scenarios that would dictate 
how fast a shutter speed you might want to use or how large or small an aperture. We'll cover those in a future tutorial, but for now what's important for me is that you understand the relationship between aperture and shutter speed. What's also important for me is that you understand how to correct the exposure if your photo is over or underexposed. And I want you to be able to do that by either adjusting aperture or shutter speed, and sometimes both. There is an exposure meter on your camera that will tell you what the camera's computer believes is the correct exposure for the scene that you are shooting. And I think it's a useful tool. Your camera also has different shooting modes. P, or auto, means that the camera will automatically select a combination of aperture and shutter speed for you. A, or aperture priority, means that you will select the aperture and then the camera, based on the light meter, will select a shutter speed that it thinks will give you a good exposure. S, or shutter speed priority, is the opposite. You will select a shutter speed and then the camera will select an aperture. And then finally, M, or manual, which is what we want to use for practice. That means that you select both aperture and shutter speed. And again, the reason why I want you to use manual mode is because I want you to understand the effect of changing shutter speed and aperture. After a little bit of practice, you should be able to take a picture, look at it, and then make adjustments to either shutter speed or aperture or both, and then either get the proper exposure for your next shot or something closer that may require one more adjustment. The beautiful thing about digital photography is that you're not wasting film. So go out there and shoot 100, 200 photos. And if you don't like any of them, just delete them all. It doesn't matter, it's just practice. Another advantage is that you don't have to wait for the film to develop and you get immediate feedback for the changes that you're making. So make sure that when you go out there, you practice the concepts that I've described. Take the same photo over and over again using different combinations of apertures and shutter speed and see what it does to your exposure. Your camera probably has a live view that lets you see the current exposure on the screen before you even take the picture. That means that you can make changes to your shutter speed or your aperture and then get immediate feedback by looking at the screen without even having to take the photo. I hope this video was helpful in explaining the fundamentals of proper exposure in photography. As I mentioned throughout the video, I've only covered exposure, which is only one part of achieving a great photo. I do believe that it's part of the foundation that every photographer should have. If you have any questions about proper exposure or photography in general, just put them in the comment section below and I'll usually get back to you fairly quickly. If you have any suggestions for how this video could be improved or any other topics that you'd like for me to cover, please also let me know. I'm very new to posting videos, so I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.